Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. It's Tuesday, January 8th, 2012. My website's ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channel is ddarko2012. Um, it'll be a little while before I get the 2013 uh, videos posted. I've been having problems signing in, so that may take a little while. But the headlines and links should be in YouTube's video description. We're going to continue here with the economy. The uh, first article I have for you is foreign direct investment by China in the United States hits a record level from January 3rd. It says Chinese foreign direct investment in the U.S. hit record levels in 2012 and shows little sign of slowing, despite lingering worries among some that the inflow of Chinese money presents a growing security risk to the country. You think? They have, like, security things and uh, security uh, military, basically military equipment and hardware drives that have back doors designed in them by Chinese. They have uh, buy nuclear parts from Chinese, and then they say, hmm, I wonder if this is... You know, I wonder if this uh, could uh, damage national security, right? But don't worry. When it comes to you or, or you or I, uh, a blogging or or tweeting or Facebooking, which I don't do Facebook anymore, but you know, anything like that, you know, monitoring our phone calls, you know, we could we could all be possible terrorists. But let, let's not, you know, let's not worry about this. The truth is, is that the the Chinese. Uh, um, uh, not just the government, but uh, their economy is completely manufactured from the ground up from foreign investment into there. And um, it's just basically a movement of the global elite's money from, like I said, company or country, whatever you want to call it, uh, to company or country. So they keep these, instead of keeping like all of this, you know, the crown jewels, they have all of this fiat based money uh, scam and they have it flowing through all these different places. And I don't think there'll ever be a big, uh, you know, uh, standoff between China and the United States militarily. I mean, who knows? Maybe that the maybe the powers that be will uh, pit them against their pit them against each other and create a war. You know, it's good for money, uh, for uh, taking on debt and stuff like that. It's good for the banks, but I I don't I don't see it happening. The most appealing U.S. sectors to Chinese investors were oil and gas exploration, advanced manufacturing that helps Chinese firms move up in the value chain, talking about rare minerals like in Afghanistan and Africa and stuff like that for their uh, electronics, and assets that allow investors to gain solid returns such as utilities, real estate, and hospitality. Yeah. Is that right? Hospitality? Uh, but one of them was what? It was um, It was the movie theater. It says, a help will be brainwashed by subversive movies any minute now. So they're kind of making a crack out of it. Uh, but it is programming. It is what you want to call brainwashing, whatever. Um, but when people hear that word brainwashing, they think, oh, it couldn't happen to me. It's like, dude, you have a back door built into you and your brain. So you can be programmed. And if you don't know it, you're going to be programmed. And most of the entertainment, like I said in yesterday's newscast, I noticed that so much propaganda, so much BS propaganda to tell you how to think and what to buy, uh, what not to buy, who not to associate yourself with. It's all in here. It's all in the TV shows, you know, the gore, the slice of necks, and uh, the video games. I'll make damn sure big companies pay their taxes, David Cameron. So he says he'll use his G8 presidency to seek collective backing to tackle corporate abuses. I'm sure he will, right? Because if he does, he won't have a job anymore. Then we have here the tax code from New York Times say the tax code may be the most progressive since 1979. So from the Wall Street Journal, who pays more tax in 2013? And you go down here and it says, Wall Street Journal tax report, how much will your taxes jump? It goes on here and it actually talks about how they passed the American Taxpayer Relief Act on New Year's Day, averting max, massive tax increases for nearly all earners. It says even so, millions of people will soon feel something less than relief from the new law. While the top 1% of taxpayers will build, bear the biggest burden, many other families, affluent and poor, will pay more as well. So it says here, a single unemployed person, income under $10,000, uh, basically says it's going to be up 20%. Then college students, uh, tax increases 14%. Then you have lower income working couple with the income between 20 and 30,000, which is a lot of people, is 446%. That's why they love the middle class, man. They love, they're just, you guys are just like tax hogs, man. You know, like a piggy bank. Uh, they like to uh, spend the credit card with you with the ball and chain tied to your ankle. Retiree household says uh, it's 5%. That's thirty to forty thousand. Higher income professionals making one hundred fifty thousand. 
uh, up 6%, high income couples up 3.9%, and very high income household income more than $1 million, uh, average tax rate 38%, average federal tax change up $170,000 or 15%. And like I said before, you think this is good, but you know this isn't the rich rich. All those people I was talking about that may uh, have these uh, these monies flowing, these uh, global elites and families and stuff like that, uh, money flowing throughout these different uh, companies and countries, uh, they don't pay taxes. They have tax havens, and they have the IRS that works for them, right? To go after a lot of these people that have their own small businesses or medium-sized businesses that are considered millionaires, right? And uh, so then they ask, well, why isn't the economy growing? Why aren't people creating jobs? Net worth of world's riches rose by 20, 241 billion in 2012. Sorry, says the Bloomberg Index ranks wealthiest 100 individuals. The richest people on the planet got richer in 2012, adding 241 billion to their collective net worth. Yeah, right. That's that's. I'm sure there's uh, a lot more. Says the aggregate net worth of the world's top moguls stood at 1.9 trillion at the market close on December 31st. So retail and telecommunications. Fortunes uh, surged about 20% on an average during the year. It says last year was a great one for the world's billionaires. Of the 100 people who appeared on the final ranking of 2012, only 16 uh, registered a net loss for the year. Tim Carney says how corporate tax credits got in the cliff deal. The fiscal cliff legislation passed this week included seven, uh, $76 billion in special interest tax credits for uh, General Electric, Hollywood, and even Captain Morgan. It says these subsidies weren't the fruit of 11th hour lobbying conduct on the cliff's edge. They were crafted back in August in a Senate committee, and they sat dormant until the House repeatedly insisted on them this week. The Family and Business Tax Cut Certainty Act of 2012, which passed through the Senate Finance Committee in August, was copied and pasted onto the fiscal cliff legislation, yield a victory for biotech co uh, companies, wind turbine makers, biodiesel producers, film studios, and their lobbyists. General Electric and Citigroup, for instance, hired Bure, uh, Brew and Lot to extend a tax provision that allows a, uh, oh yeah, these are, uh, they actually hired politicians that allows a tax provision that allows multinational corporations to defer U.S. taxes by moving profits into offshore financial subsidiaries. That's why I always think it's a joke when people call them U.S. companies. Uh, this provision, known as the Active Financing Exception, is the main tool GE uses to avoid nearly all U.S. corporate tax income taxes. You have the four business gangs that run the United States. Goes on here as if you ever suspected politics is increasingly being run in the interest of big business. I have news. Uh, Jeffrey Sachs, a highly respected economist from Columbia University, agrees with you, says here, at least in respect of the United States. He calls it, uh, in a book, The Price of Civilization, saying the U.S. economy is caught in a feedback loop. Corporate wealth translates into political power through campaign financing, corporate lobbying, and the revolving door of jobs between government and industry, and political power translates into further wealth through tax cuts. They call that corporate welfare. Uh, that's what uh, Mr. Cameron was vowing to make damn sure uh, that he'll take care of. But it goes on here and it says that translating the fur further wealth through tax cuts, deregulation, and sweetheart contracts between government and industry, wealth begets power and power begets wealth. So it goes in there and quotes President Eisenhower's uh, farewell address in 61, uh, linking the military and private industry, creating a political power, called the military industrial complex, or the, what they typed, uh, or dubbed corporatocracy. Some people call it corporatism. Uh, Bilderberg Group dominates Bil uh, Bloomberg Billionaires Index. So the organization was founded in 54, like most of you know by Global Elite. It says they once again dominate the Bloomberg Billionaire Index. And people like GE and Pepsi Cola and all those companies, um, DuPont, uh, they all get together behind closed doors. and. Um, I, you know, I, I think, I don't think it's as big as what people say, like uh, when you have Alex Jones there protesting and stuff like that. Um, I mean, things are really being crafted in these private think tanks and stuff like that. Uh, I think this is mostly ceremonial, uh, basically kind of, uh, you know, where, where are we now, where are we going, but nothing, you know, no legislation or no uh, uh, policies written, like the Brookings Institute uh, that's being carried out in Syria right now to get a regime change so they can go in there and exploit their resources. The following table reveals official Bilderberg Group members who have been listed on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Uh, number, what is it, number two, Bill Gates. 
63 billion in 2010, Warren Buffett 49 billion in 2009, Larry Ellison 40 billion in 99, uh, Bernard Arnold at 30 billion 92, Jeff Bezos 24 and George Soros 21 billion in 99. But people shouldn't be naive. They should keep their eye on uh, these people because you'll see the type of stuff that they promote and uh, especially with Bill Gates and his eugenics and vaccines and uh, uh, as he calls them reproductive services uh, for population control measures. Then you have welcome to Obamacare, yet another tax that has been helped or sorry, heaped on you effectively January 1st, 2013. I guess they would say that they're helping you, right? Kind of like the uh, a fiscal cliff, whatever bill they called uh, tax relief, right? says, welcome to Obamacare, January 1st, 2013, shopping at Cabela's Sports Store this morning and during a checkout uh, from, well, what was this, January 2nd, so January, yeah. He says here that during the checkout, the guy says, welcome to Obamacare, he then highlights the medical excise tax on his receipt, $5.82. So there you go, medical excise tax, five eighty two. It's section 4191 of the Internal Revenue Code now imposes an excise tax on the sale of certain medical devices that is taxable uh, after December 31st, 2012. Health insurers raise some rates by double digits, um, says here across the country, seeking and winning double digit increases in premiums for some customers. It's supposed to be the Affordable Care Act, right? So one of the biggest objectives of the Obama regime's health care law was to stem the rapid rise in insurance costs. No, it wasn't. Remember, it was to give a monopoly. It was written by the insurance companies to give them a monopoly and stuff like that. So they can give you less coverage, um, just like you're working harder, longer for less because of this, quote, recession, which I call consolidation of the world's wealth. And uh, basically the middle class, you know, my parents and your grandparents, all that wealth that they accumulated through working hard and saving up um, was stolen. So siphoned off. And everybody said, where did it go? It went down the black hole. And the black hole usually leads to, like I said, of these international global elites and um, what some people call the Khazars, just different factions, mafias, families, bloodlines. But like I, I was talking about before I went off uh, on that little hiatus, was that uh, this whole healthcare law was probably written to uh, actually increase unemployment. I'm sorry, decrease unemployment, to increase employment. Someone said they didn't understand uh, you know, because people have to pay more employers. But what they, but what I was saying was that, in the long run, it's going to actually bring unemployment uh, rates down. But it's still going to be bad. It means that they're going to have people that are working now go to part time, or they're going to fire them, and then they'll have to fire and uh, uh, get another job in part time, uh, to avoid the threshold of whatever 29 hours, so they don't have to pay this stuff. So they just hire more part time workers, which means there's going to be more people with less hours, which means it's going to be permanent poverty. This is a poverty bill that's going to help, uh, 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 again, fudge the unemployment numbers. We'll see, though, right? Germany accused of deporting its elderly. Rising numbers moved to Asia and Eastern Europe because of sky-high care costs. So the elderly and sick and uh, the UK, or sorry, Germany is being sent abroad due to rising care costs, probably in England, too. It's pretty bad there. So it's described as inhumane deportation and a huge alarm signal. It says the warning to Britain where pensioners are selling homes to pay for health care. I don't know what they're going to do there in Germany, but it's probably the same thing as England. They're just going to, they're just going to uh, um, have immigration wide open and everything, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, their own ethnic Germans, uh, they have to pay them to procreate because it's that bad, and so that's what they're going to do. They're they're going to again fudge the numbers, leave the immigration door uh, floodgates open, and then that will uh, maintain the population of a good. Uh, a multiculturalist um, society, right? That's completely palatable, won't stick together, uh, won't uh, uh, fight back against all of this crap. They'll just be completely engineered in this uh, technological, um, how would you call it, a scientific dictatorship. Uh, hospitals are letting patients die to save money. So this is actually an older article. Hospitals are depriving elderly patients of food and drink to hasten their deaths as part of a cost-cutting measure to free up bed space. Um, so and then we have, I smoked until I was 70 and I still enjoy a drink, health tips from a 109-year-old who has just become Britain's oldest man. So, and there's a picture of him, he's smiling and happy. So he said, there's no need to live too carefully. I smoked until I was 70 and I still enjoy a drink. I have a sweet tooth too. My favorite meal is cottage pie, which I make myself. He also says that he does his own shopping, enjoys cooking, going out walking. And he saw two world wars and 24 prime ministers come and go. I'll return with this article. This is GGN, and I'm Darko.
thank you.